Right guys, welcome back. Um, I have now cleaned and attempted at least to passivate my Brew Tools B80 Pro. Um, so today I'm just going to take you through the way I've got this set up. So I'm using three three-way valves on this system. Um, I've not shown you kind of installing those. They are quite simple. Um, obviously just make sure you've got a gasket in between each piece and then yeah apply the tri clamp really straightforward um, I did have to have a bit of a play with it um, last night um, <laughs> and I'm not going to show you that video because there was water all over the floor I was trying to pump the pump the wrong way and yeah it, it was a bit of a learning experience which is fine this is obviously a lot more complicated and in depth uh, than, than your kind of standard um, all-in-one systems um, so I've got most of uh, most of the things kind of in place now apart from the tubing um, so I'm just going to take you through what I have learned okay so as you're facing the boiler um, you can see the three valves there so you can see uh, the right uh, hand side of the valve so it's obviously right as if you're facing the control panel you've got the, uh, the lower left uh, port and valve there and then you've got the left valve Okay, so we'll kind of start over here. So obviously that's the main, um, that's the main valve um, that allows you to either pump out or drain the tank or recirculate. And okay, so this is where I went wrong yesterday. <clears throat> so foolishly, uh, I was trying to pump out of that valve uh, with the pump being in there, if you can see it. <clears throat> But that's obviously not the way it should be. Uh, if I'd have read the instructions, I would have known that, but uh, alas, uh, I like to learn by doing and ultimately <laughs> making mistakes. But uh, there you go, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, water on the floor and a mop cleaned it up pretty quickly, so that's fine. Okay, so, um, you're gonna be pumping in from this side uh, using your sparge water. So obviously this needs to be, um, you know, set the right way. Uh, and then water goes down there uh, and into the pump and depending on how this is set up so what you're going to need you're going to need to go up the center so where is it this one here if you're sparging and I've not got the pipe installed at the moment uh, but obviously the water will come up through the pipe and sparge over the grain bed okay part one one thing to note, and again, it's a mistake I made. So the temperature sensor and the other one is exactly the same. Before you install this with the tri clamp, just screw the temperature sensor in to the hole underneath whilst this piece is loose. Because when you turn in this, oops, sorry. So when you turn in this, it's not a free flowing uh, nut. It's actually attached to the wire. So if you're trying to screw it in whilst this is in situ, the wire will literally twist with it uh, and just kind of try and spring back. And obviously you don't want your wire all twisted and mangled up. So screw this in whilst um, the temperature probe uh, 90 mil piece is loose and then install it with the tri clamp. Okay. Right. So this is the lower left port three-way valve so this is where you're going to be pumping out essentially okay so the way i'm going to have it set up is well lost tracking it's going to pump out here the wart's going to pump out here it's going to pump into the counter floor chiller it's going to come out of the counter floor chiller and then it's going to go into the third three-way valve and again this needs to be set the right way so that the wart goes back into the tank now because I've got the third um, temperature sensor I can tell what the temperature is uh, whilst I'm recirculating so once I'm hitting you know you kind of uh, pitch in temperature I can then flick this valve and then that will then allow me to transfer the wart into the fermenter Okay, 
So obviously that's where the water's coming out from the bottom of the tank. So this one, once I've finished the brew day, um, I would be able to drain the whole tank, wash out all the crap, and I can just drain this into like a bucket or the sink or whatever. Okay. So again, same deal with that temperature sensor. Install, screw this in whilst that piece is loose before applying with the tri clamp. All right. So at the moment, I've got two 19 mil barbs for the in watt and out watt on the counter floor chiller. I've got a 12 mil water in, but I am one short overall. So I'm, I think out of the, all the things, I am literally missing one 12 mil. <clears throat> um, yeah, barb. But that's not such a big deal because I think I'm going to have this unit in the sink anyway, or very, very close to it. So the water could just kind of pour out here or spray out. The only kind of disadvantage is, is that I won't be able to realistically, um, you know, collect some water for kind of washing or, you know, for another brew or whatever. So conserving water, but I'll pick one up at some point. That, that shouldn't be a problem. And once I'm a bit more familiar with all these valves, um, you know, I might be able to kind of <clears throat> cap one end off that's not being used and, uh, you know, basically just move that over, um, yeah, to this kind of empty port, but it's not a big deal. We'll be able to manage. Uh, they don't have them on Malt Miller at the moment. Um, so I'll uh, pick one up, you know, when okay. I can. I probably should clarify. So the... Uh, the kind of missing, it's not missing really, um, not, not as such. So the counter flow chiller in the recommended accessories pack comes with two 12 mil barbs, uh, but the way I've set it up is I've actually got one of the 12 mil barbs here uh, for the sparge water to come in. Uh, and that's just because the I'm gonna keep hold of my Bulldog Brewer uh, and the tubing that I've got for that is basically just more accommodating for that kind of size barb uh, without messing around with uh, adapters and things. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd point that out just uh, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, the rest of the barbs, as you can probably see, they're all 19 mil. Um, there you go. They're all 90 mil uh, with one 12 mil bar there, one on the counter floor chiller water in, and uh, that's kind of your lot, really. That's 19 as well. Um, quick note on this uh, I probably could have gone a bit more kind of straight and then in, but I didn't want to dog leg and have a kink in the pipe, so I've kind of gone for a bit of a sweeping uh, bend, uh, which seems to be you know, quite nice. Uh, I, th I think I should get a good flow out of that. Okay. You have caught me lubing my dip tube. There you are. Two of them, in fact. Um, okay, so this is the second one. I've already got one that I just installed. You can see there. Uh, and that's on the left-hand port as you as you are looking at the uh, the vessel. Uh, and that's the one that comes with the recommended accessories pack and is for whirlpooling. So uh, the one I'm going to install now, and this one, you can see possibly a very fine film uh, of lubrication on those O-rings. Um, we're going to install, as again, as you're looking at the vessel, um, on the right port. So, I'll rest that there. Um, Let's see if we can get this in. A little twist. It's just a snug fit. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. There we are. Jobs are good. In. So I'm glad I waited for the silicon grease actually because it was quite a snug fit. Um, I was thinking maybe to just kind of force it in, but I, I just felt like the O-rings were gonna kind of like roll out of this kind of um, the groove. So yeah, so I just waited for the grease uh, that came today. It's not actually silicon grease, now that I mention it. 
It is uh, food grade grease. I think it's, based, it's hydrocarbon based, um, but you know it's uh, food grade for O rings. It did specify as well that it was for Viton or Viton um, O rings, which is the material that the ones uh, that the O rings from the brew tools are made out of. So I wasn't anticipating using much of this grease. Which is a good job really, considering how small it is. Look at that. 20 mil. Never mind. Like I said, that's probably going to last me about 20 years, but uh, <laughs> I was a bit surprised when it came and it was like the tiniest thing ever. It's only as big as my thumb. Anyway. So, yeah, so the dip tube there, like I said, that's kind of set for whirlpooling. I'll have to have a play with the, uh, the angle to see what uh, what angle gives me the best whirlpool and um, for this one I'll leave that in the upright position for now um, because yeah that, that's the kind of recommended start position for that dip tube because when you're recirculating through that uh, it just ensures that the, uh, yeah, the, the level of the wart while you're mashing um, doesn't go below uh, the level of the elements and end up scorching the elements uh, but obviously when you're, you know, you're kind of away, uh, you know, and you, you're ready to drain, then you can just kind of push that down, maybe with one of the paddles or something like that. Uh, push that down to the bottom uh, and suck as much water as you can. So that's it for now, thank you. Lastly, we've got the, uh, the four inch uh, flange for the steam hat. Um, so you might remember in my, one of my previous videos, I wasn't actually sure if I'd ordered it. Um, when I ordered the steam hat and the main unit and all the accessories and whatnot from Malt Miller. Now it turns out I did and they just forgot to send it to me. Uh, but I contacted them, uh, Rob got back to me straight away and sent it out same day. <clears throat> and it came the day after, so brilliant stuff from Malt Miller, thank you very much. You know, mistakes happen, uh, but it's how you rectify them uh, after that that, that kind of counts really. Uh, so very much appreciated. Um, so yeah, so that, that is just going to help, and I mentioned it previously, I'm just going to attach a kind of, you know, tumble dryer hose uh, with a jubilee clip. I've got a four inch jubilee clip, uh, and I'm just going to pipe it out to the window. So until I am able to get hold of the uh, condenser unit uh, for this, uh, for the B80 Pro, uh, which is going to be super, super useful, uh, then I'm just going to kind of fudge something together uh, and, and make that work for me. Uh, for now, uh, so t to attach the uh, flange, you need a four inch um, tri clamp and gasket, uh, and again, that's from the Mark Miller. Now, they sell the two together, so um, the flange is separate by itself, uh, but the tri clamp and the associated gasket, so the four inch gasket that's the rubber thing that's inside there, uh, they come together. Uh, but on the Brew Tools website, they're actually sold separately, so it's just something to kind of bear in mind. Okay? Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more Brew Tools videos soon, uh, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.